decision? Well, I mean, initially, like, I was dead serious when I was saying I had no interest in this fight. But, you know, Dana White and the UFC, they have ways of making things happen that they want happen. So when uh, when they started trying to really make the fight happen, um, it, it became very difficult for me to say no. So, uh, but it wasn't anything that I saw in his, his fighting style. He's a, he, he's a very tough guy, very durable. He's very well-rounded. He can do everything, you know. So uh, there was no glaring weakness in his fight style. It was just when they made me the offer, I was like, wow, this seems pretty good. And, and I've always felt like stylistically it's a, good, it's, a good, it's a good fight for me because he's a guy that wrestles and he's a guy that boxes. You know, he's not a, he's not a huge kicker. You know, guys like mm. Jones are the guys that would give you trouble. A guy like Luke Rocco would give me trouble because he's a guy that kicks all the time. Those are the guys that I struggle with more than a guy that does essentially what I do, right? I wrestle and I box, and that's what Steve Amiochi does. So obviously you're saying Dana made you an offer that you couldn't refuse, and I know in the past um, you didn't want to fight at heavyweight because of Cain Velasquez. This is your interview, DC. We want to hear about you. But what is the scenario with Cain? Is he is he taking some time out still? Is he injured? What's the deal? Well, when I was thinking about doing it, I spoke to Cain, and Cain said to me, "He goes, I don't think that they're going to give me a title shot right away." So this is such a huge opportunity. I think you should take it. And then when you win the fight, that's a bridge we'll cross whenever we get there. I said, I don't rule out going back to 205. Like, we have a ton of options uh, as we go forward, you know. So it's not like I'm limited to the heavyweight division or or limited to the 205-pound division. You know, there there are options for me, and and, and none of those options include fighting, Kane. So uh, there are a ton of ways for us to, to go around that. So, DC, you just fought Vulcan, what, last week. Now you're doing the ultimate yeah. fighter. Then you're going to fight Stipe. You commentate for the UFC. You're on UFC tonight. You've still got your own podcast. Dude, the busiest motherfucker in MMA <laughs> right now goes to you. Congratulations on that. Um, it's crazy, man. I mean, of course, make hay while the sun shines. I get it. But I'm, I'm blown away by your work ethic. Good for you. Well, you got to try to just get while the getting good, like you said, Mikey. I, I don't. Uh, I, I like doing. I like doing these things. You know, I, I like UFC tonight. I love calling fights. I love. I mean, you talk about me, but we do the same exact thing. I mean, yeah. you and I have the same exact schedule. You know, so it's just, you, you know how it is. I mean, we come from places where we didn't necessarily have the most. So when you yeah. have an opportunity to make a future for your kids. You just go ahead and do it. You know, we'll, we'll, I just want to work, man. I got to work hard because I have to provide a life for my family that I didn't really have uh, when I was growing up. Now, I know with um, the only other time we've really seen this happen where a champion, you know, moved on to another weight class to fight for the title was with Connor, and, and they made him, you know, give up the 145-pound title. Are they only making you give up the light heavyweight title if you win the heavyweight title, or do you have to give it up before you go and fight? There has been no talk of me giving up the light heavyweight championship. Really? They didn't even say, not at all. They didn't even said to me, he goes, this is, this is Saturday, right after the fight, he goes, go by Stipe. He goes, if you, you know, you win the fight, if you win the fight, and you decide to vacate, he goes and vacate. He goes, whatever. He goes, I just think it's such a great fight. We need to make it. So I was like, okay. They never yeah, talked I mean, to me about vacating the lightweight title. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that makes sense anyway. But he's right. You're right. This is an amazing fight. You know, you know, DC. I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Of course, the only problem you've had in your MMA career is this whole thing with John Jones, right? We, we, everyone knows about mm-hmm. that. But if you go out there, you take care of Steve Miocic, you know, that will totally eradicate any of that mess with John Jones. And you, you'll go down as one of the greatest fighters that ever lived. Surely that had to go through your mind at some point. It goes through my mind every day. Yeah. Every day the idea that I can, if I can do this, and I say if because I respect Stipe Miocic and I know it's a big ass for anyone, much less a light heavyweight. 
But I do believe that I match up favorably against him, and I believe that I'm going to win this fight with every part of me. But if I get this done, this is something that is so out there that no one's never really even attempted it, right? Randy Couture did it, but he, he lost the, the light heavyweight title, went up and fought for the heavyweight title. No one ever did it while holding the lower weight classes. Nobody even attempted it because it's so out there. If I can go and accomplish this thing that's so rare and so far left, yes, I should be in the conversation for not only one of the greatest to ever do it, but one of the greatest fighters, the greatest to ever do it. Not just one of, but the conversation for the best fighter of all time. I truly believe that because it's such a massive accomplishment. Do you think that, um, you know, the John, and I and I do believe this, and me and Mike have talked about it. I, I, I think that because John has been caught um, cheating, I think that it really puts a huge asterisk there. Um, do you do you think that that's the difference in that fight was him being a cheat? No, I mean, Mike and I agree on a lot of things, right? So Mike fought, and some of these guys that he fought were obviously juiced to the gills, right? Just freaking cheating and, and, and being okay with it. And then when you try to come around, Michael Bisbee becomes the UFC champion, right? So his rise came right around the time that they started to level the playing field. But make no mistake about it, the guys that Mikey lost to and the guy that I lost to, they were cheating. But there were a lot of guys over the course of our records that we beat that were also cheating. So... It wasn't only the cheating. They do have skill, too. You know, so I don't want to take away his accomplishment in that way because he's got to be a good fighter to do what he did. But it doesn't hurt. It obviously helps. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. But he's not the only guy that I've ever fought that has been on steroids. And well, I DC, all the rest of we didn't bring you on here, and thank you very much. We didn't bring you on here to talk about John Jones because fuck that guy. Um, you're doing the <laughs> Ultimate Fighter, DC. Do you know yeah. what you're getting yourself in for, man? Because I've done it twice. It is a pain in the ass. It's a lot of work. It's fun. It's good fun, but, you know, uh, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I've been on twice as an assistant, right? So I went with Koshik. Okay. And I was on Team Velasquez, but... As the assistant, the leash is very loose. Yeah. I think as the main guy, you got to take a little more responsibility. The issue is, after you fight at light heavyweight and you fight at, at heavyweight and as a UFC champion, you know after every fight there's obligation. There are appearances and stuff that you have to do. And yep. I'm just hoping that the ultimate fighter, they understand that there are going to be times where I have to kind of have to take off for a couple of days and, and, and when I do that my I, I trust my coaching staff to actually take care of these kids and, and, and get exactly what I would give them. Because my thing is this they are getting what made me a world champion. They're getting every one of my coaches so I feel like they're getting the best that there is out there. And how much who are the coaches gonna be? Oh sorry Lewis, go ahead. Well I was gonna and, and you can answer Mike was gonna ask you who are the coaches, but this also relates to that. How much um you know uh, on the ultimate fighter how much of that real experience are they getting? How much of yourself as a coach does somebody competing in the Ultimate Fighter get versus somebody that is, you know, training with you in real life? Because for TV, we all know there's a lot of cameras and production, but, I mean, are they getting the real Daniel Cormier experience? Yeah, they're going to get exactly what I get, right? So my whole deal is this. It's six weeks, and it's six weeks where the kids are fighting quite often. So you can't put them through a training camp as if I was going through a six-week training camp. But I will give them the foundation for what I would do in a training camp. We're going we're gonna to spar. We're going to wrestle. And I'm going to introduce them to some high-level coaches, not only my coaches, but guys like, like Olympic champion wrestlers may come in and help to wrestle a, a four a day. I want to introduce them to the highest level of sport so that they see and learn from the very best. So being on my team, I just got access to a lot of things uh, to try to help these kids with this experience. So you never know who these guys are going to become, right? Nobody knew who Rashad Evans would become, Michael Bisping would become, T.J. Dillashaw would become. I mean, we may be looking at one of the next UFC champions on this show, so we have to nurture them as best that we can. DC, you never stop promoting. Now I want to watch it. <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> I, 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 
I know you're a busy man, okay, so we'll let you go. But I've got to ask one last question. It's kind of a twofold question. Uh, everybody yes, said sir. my boy, Luke Rockhold, was training with Volkan Uzdemir. What do you say about that? And is he going to be on the Ultimate Fighter with you? And how is he going to do against Yoel Romero? There you go. Threefold, triple go. last question. Threefold. He did work out. He's down in Florida, right? Luke had to train it, change his training situation because of Kane and I being out of the gym a lot, and families. And when we weren't training, uh, he really didn't have the right partners. But he likes Henry Hoop, so he went down and trained there. He did not say... He was. Tra he said he wasn't training with Vulcan. They didn't smart. They didn't do anything, and uh, it really didn't matter. Obviously, because I won the fight. Second, exactly. I think Luke Rockhold beat Joel Romero, but I'm a bit biased, Mike, as you know. But uh, I think, <laughs> no, I, come on. I think I think if he kicks, if he's able to kick and keep Joel at distance. He went to the fight. He's got to be very careful because you're all so explosive yep. and so powerful that if he lands, man, he could put anybody out. And uh, last question was... What was I the don't last know. part of that, Mikey? Fuck, I you don't know. It, yeah, yeah, it was threefold. Oh, is he going to be a coach on the show? But that's not really important. I wanted oh, yeah, to know yeah, about yeah, Yoel. Well. wanted to know yeah, about Vulcan. He's going to come out and visit and help. Uh, yes, our relationship hasn't changed. With Mike. Yo. I got a question for you. Please you go ahead. What are you doing in March? I want. Listen, <laughs> I know. Mom, hey, Mike. I know. Mama saying. Mama saying. No more, baby. I love you. You've done enough. You are the champ. You're the man, baby. I don't need to see you make that walk again. But Mikey, I need to see you make that walk one more time. Well, DC, Mikey, I need to see you make that walk one more time, buddy. Go well, do DC, it this is the thing. This is the thing. You text me yesterday or, or whenever it was, and you said, guys like me and you were the, uh, the last of a dying breed. And you're yes. absolutely right. Absolutely right. That's why I respect you so much for doing this. That's why... More than likely, I will be fighting again. You're throwing me under a bus on my own podcast. I fucking love it. I've been trying to avoid that question like the plague. You're a goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> on that note, go and kick uh, Steve Pears. I love Steve Pears as well. Steve Pears is a great guy. Going to be a great season of the Ultimate Fighter. Anything you want to finish up on? Hey, Mike, I just say thanks, man. I appreciate you guys having me. And good luck whenever you do go kick somebody's ass. Right on, man. All right, DC, talk soon.